Good evening. My name is Laura Kriefman. I'm the CEO at the Barbican Theatre in Plymouth, and I'm really pleased to welcome you to this evening's uh, masterclass as part of our Rebels series. Um, I'm really excited by the two people we've got here speaking to you this evening. I can tell you a bit more about them in just a second. But first of all, I'm just going to give you a little bit of context about what we're doing at the Barbican. Um, we run a huge range of talent development work, which is all about giving people the opportunity to find their own creative voices and us figuring out how to give you platforms for that to be seen and heard in different ways across Plymouth, across the city, across the world one day. We're working all the way up to there. Um, the masterclasses are part of that. We are working um, every Thursday to bring you a expert or an extraordinary creative from the area or who is a leading uh, thought provoker in their field to come and uh, offer these free webinars for you where you can have a chance to hear from them and hear from them about what they do in their careers. Um, we've had all kinds of people so far from um, spatialized sound to looking at ethical making to theater makers to um, uh, last week had conversations about actually how you understand your own value and your worth and think about your financial approach to um, your value. And um, next, the week after next, we've got um, Yuella Jackson from Raising Arts talking about actually how and why you should value your creative voice. We've got filmmakers coming in, we've got dance experts, we've got people talking about Chicago footwork. It's a really packed series, so do check out the website and the masterclass pages and sign up and come along and enjoy these because um, they're a highlight of my weeks um, and hopefully they are yours too. Tonight's masterclass is um, is a great opportunity to hear from two really great creatives from here in Plymouth and the surrounding area. Maddie V and Benny Lau Crispin. Now, Benny Lau Crispin owns uh, the Granary Studios, which is just outside of Plymouth. He's a commercial music producer and manager. He has um, performed all over the world at all kinds of festivals, and he's got a really interesting approach and a really integral approach to kind of actually creating opportunities for people and, um, and a real interesting understanding of the commercial music industry. Maddie V is a phenomenal MC and hype woman who's also based here in Plymouth. You should hear it. And actually tonight you're gonna to get to. Um, and we invited them because I wanted to give you a chance to hear from two really great, really up and coming and successful in their own rights artists from the music industry. As part of our launch of our Rebels Music Programme, which is a new programme that we're gonna, which starts uh, at the end of this term, we're doing loads of launch events up until March. Um, but also because they've both done something really interesting, which is that they have continued to be based here in Plymouth, here in the Southwest. And so we wanted to bring them in to get them to talk about their careers and also the pros and cons of uh, not giving in to the pull of London. So um, Benny and Maddie, I'm going to open with that as your opening gambit, not just a, you know, just a hard question to start off with. Sweet. Um, hello, everyone. Hiya. Um, we're actually in the studio now, yes, um, we are. and we're excited to talk um, about how we've sort of built our career paths being down in the southwest. Um, so I think, yeah, we'll we'll start there. Um, some of the pros and cons. What have been the pros and cons for you, Maddie? Oh, I tell you what. Probably one of the cons is traveling. traveling sure, I get definitely yeah. to travel up to London or wherever you're going all around the place. That is probably one of the main cons for me. Yeah, it's a it's it's a slog sometimes having to like function, getting paid from a gig, and balancing the money with travel. Yeah, because it's not just uh, you're going to do that set. It's all about this a whole two days. Like, yeah. you know, you've got to go there. You might have to stay overnight. You might have to come back. You know. Definitely. And I've thought about this and there is a slight pro to this as well, being down in the Southwest and uh, in the fact that um, it costs a lot to live in London. And like, oh, yeah. um, I know a lot of musicians that have migrated and um, set up home and then returned because yeah. of the cost of just living in yeah. London. Yeah, it and is. It's absolutely, uh, it's, it's <laughs> incredible out there. Yeah, like it's, it, it was one of the reasons why I didn't move and I sort of tried to like build some um, a career down here. Um, well, I rather, suppose all of your finances are wanting to go on to your music and sure. things like that. So yeah. Yeah. So if you're going to be in a place that's sort of more financially... Uh, suitable to build your career then that's, yeah. you've picked the right place <laughs> <laughs> yeah um another 
um, pro I thought of being down in the Southwest was um, that you can build a local fan base um, from the off. I think like having those local, local heads um, and local friends opens up doors uh, further afield. Yeah, you, definitely. you know, like I met um, when I started Panda, I met Charlie um, and obviously Charlie has been in London and stuff. And he sort of linked me to so many avenues yeah. um, and just having making that network of friends down here. A hundred percent. I feel like that is um, a positive of being down here is even though you're not as connected in terms of travel, the people that you speak to you know there's the social media so you're always connected with people sure but it's so accessible now isn't it yeah, through social it media it like having the platform you can go across the country and across the world yeah i feel um, like that's yeah i feel like maybe that's what this new generation should know is that it isn't you don't have to be up in london or anywhere yeah. else you can be stay put and still network with people because of the accessibility of the internet yeah definitely um and you know, I've looking at the gig side of things, the pros and cons of the gigs, like, you know, the the club um clubs, clubs down isn't the best. It's not <laughs> it's not always the best. Um, but it it it's built it's been building, but it's obviously COVID's happened and it's kind of like probably taking quite a big hit. Yeah. And I hope I'm sure some venues are struggling. So yeah, hopefully they'll be all right. Um but yeah, like the the big clubs and playing in them, like yeah. Uh, it's like down here there's not that many bigger clubs to sort of showcase yourself um um and definitely we've taken a hit from covid sure um but yeah i think it's just definitely just utilizing the places that we can at the moment and getting the most out of it sure okay um so yeah i think um one of the next questions i was going to ask you is how have um brand association for yourself helped like sticker studios i know um chris has like pushed you and signed and i just want to know how how you sort of came about that connection and what that, they've done it was actually mad um so um i remember going to uh nas festival which is where sicker studios have their stage yeah, <laughs> NAS festival. sick of sundays yeah no, drummer, oh, don't, don't i miss the festivals yeah um so yeah i basically um i went to that festival and i i fell in love with that stage i always in my heart like I think it was never, it was always subconscious that I loved Sicker so much. Yeah. But it wasn't until it actually came around that I realised it was meant for me. Yeah, cool. So, um, so yeah, I made um, a connection down here with someone called Leslie D. Um, and he put me into contact and basically just asked me how much I was. And I just said to him that I just wanted the opportunity. I genuinely just wanted to go and perform. Yeah. Like, that's all I wanted to do um and so yeah so that's what happened yeah. I went and I, I performed and after that they obviously took me on but that was it was such a, a big thing because after that set everything changed for me everything changed yeah. during it was in the space of a month it went from well this could be my career to this is definitely my career now yeah it's, <laughs> um, it's yeah. amazing what um doing I, and I'm a big advocate of you should definitely get paid um, to play mm -hmm. but I've done my fair share of free gigs yeah. to make a network and look yeah. at the bigger opportunity yeah. and I think like it's doing important. the odd free one just to like get yourself in the door yeah. with these sort of brands and labels yeah, um, is a great a great way to branch out from the south mm. um <laughs> yeah, well, most, most of the time if you are doing it for free it's something that you really really exactly. want to do anyway <laughs> yeah. So, yeah i'm not doing a wedding for free no yeah, <laughs> but i can completely agree though it's always good like i do think you should know your worth 100 percent. you should know you know you shouldn't ever yeah go, go undervalue what, yeah undervalue yourself um but yeah there is there's also if there's an opportunity there because if you do this thing for free there are so many more things like I've had, you know, an event where I've done it for free and then I've got booked for free other events that have all been paid. Yeah. It, that's it, the way that it goes. Yeah. Just, yeah. That's, that is part of being done here. Yeah. Hi, Laura. Hi. Um, I'm going to pick up on um, uh, one of those things which has come up about because uh, it's so interesting that you're talking about how you started off and how you got that first that took that first risk of asking to perform at the NAS stage was sicker. 
but is that actually how you started or how did you start your career where did you when did you start um, first um, playing with rhymes and finding your voice how did you to the point of what of being confident of asking for a place on that stage can you tell you a bit more about your journey of course I can. yeah I tell you what it all happened very very quickly and very suddenly um I went out to my first rave um and I fell in love with the music and the atmosphere it was mainly the atmosphere um because I didn't have that many friends growing up so I never really got to experience the getting to go out with your friends do this do that um until I started going to raves with some new people that I had met and um then I remember seeing somebody called Mr Traumatic yeah. I thought he was incredible and I was just like oh what is he doing and what is that because <laughs> yeah. that seems like something I want to do um and then I thought about it and it was about three months um I remember I was it was just if music would come on like drum and bass music I would usually be in front of my mirror doing my makeup or something and I remember the first time I stuck on, I think it was, I might have been Mackie G or something like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And um, nice. I, I, I wrote down these lines and I pressed play and I did it. And I remember jumping up, screaming, thinking, oh, my goodness, I can do this. This is this is something that I want to do. It's fun. Um, I remember showing somebody in my life at the time and they were like, you can do this. Yeah. So I suppose in my head, yeah. I was writing for about three months and just sort of playing with it. And then that's when I put up a video online and then that's how it all started. Yes. yes that video. And are you on a track with Mr. Traumatic? Yes, I am. <laughs> I, know, I know, right? Yeah, so no, we're going to play that later, I think. That um, incredible. <laughs> um, yeah, to, to actually have um some content with somebody that genuinely kickstarted your career it is a little moment and it does make you feel quite yeah quite like a bit accomplished Humbled. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 nice yeah. yeah fair play Andy. Um, yeah, that's how it all started really and then um i just started putting up videos and i kept writing i was a receptionist at the time so i had all this access to just sitting down and writing so yeah it was yeah, yeah, my my path was a bit different. Yeah. Um, so when I was younger, I like I got a set of turntables and I started mixing, and I used to mix drum and bass, and we used to put on um, better raves, which were free parties at the time, and this was like 10, 15 years ago now. Um, and um, yeah, I used to just uh, mix and MC, and then I sort of progressed and moved to Plymouth. Um, and then I started out at like bass funk in the White Rabbit, doing drum and bass, Rabbit, and wow. yeah. Um, so That's I met like long gone, isn't it? Bossa and Tuscan and Script MC. Um, yeah. We're all like coming through from the southwest, and Script went on to be Zinc's MC and Nets guy, and you know, like Plymouth has a history of like oh, yeah. pushing these people. And Rory Tuscan is doing is smashing it at the minute on AFT, no, releasing some wicked jungle like records that are Sick. amazing. It's amazing uh, to see the talent that comes out of Plymouth. Actually. Yeah. Um and what I'm seeing like more of um having the studio now and this is the reason why I opened the studio is to like help these young emerging artists just know that they've got a bit of support um and they can ask me anything and I would from my experience of being messed around um yeah. give them advice and like hopefully give them a path and a bit of management um yeah. to progress their career as well yeah, um exactly. and yeah it's yeah, worth well, it's, really it's, it's, it's really nice at the minute because we're building this um no I know you... <laughs> I'm building I, yeah. an incredible this studio I'm sat in is amazing yeah. and it's only gonna get better isn't it cool <laughs> um and do so, you think I'm just going to ask you another question now? I'm just popping okay. up every now and again. Is that all right? I'm yeah, just you questions. <laughs> but having set up the studio, so you've done a really brave thing, which is you set up a studio during all of the lockdowns. Um, and at a time, as you said, you know, the clubs are closed. Um, we've got massive shifts in how and where. I mean, we've had the announcements today that Glast there's no Glastonbury, you know. <laughs> um heart of hearts yeah yeah because I normally work there as well and it's just like this is such a strange time but are you finding I know Benny you've talked to us about the fact that you've been doing a certain number of live streams and things like that are you finding that there are other platforms 
and other ways in which you've been able to showcase your work and your production and your musicality over this year? Yeah, sure. So um, what it, what I thought um, when COVID in, initially came and we, we, it happened whilst we were setting this up and due to open, so we held back until March. Um, and then when we opened, you know, there was a big interest and we got people in by doing a free hour just to showcase what yeah. what we can do you know yeah, just exactly. a bit of value for money for people mm -hmm. um so then it changed again every time there's a lockdown the way we work has to change um and there's new measures that come into place that we have to operate safely um and studios sort of sit in this weird um place in creative where it's a professional um studio environment professionals they can't um they can't take away that recording whereas the live stream um and the shows have all gone so a lot of revenue for artists has depleted um but i've found um having the labels and i've created a few labels for different genres um just to get music out and start still build that following so hopefully because there's a decrease in professional artists releasing i think as much music there is this sort of gap in the market for younger up and comers to like make yeah. make their way through right now. Yeah, um, <laughs> so they're, not, they're not dropping their bangers yet. Yeah, they, so. I think so. We're going to see an influx of music yes. year, when festivals go again. But yeah. Um, yeah, that's sort of been my okay. way. Is that what you're finding as well, Maddie? Because actually, I think that's a really good point about the fact that some of the very established artists are just sitting back because kind of they've still got revenue coming in from their. Uh, previous releases and things like that um that there is are you finding mandy uh, that there is more space for you say that there is more opportunities at the moment or you know your interest you're going for things more than other people might be um i definitely think that i've been seeing lots of new people pop up all over the place and i feel like it's sort of been nice in a way because with lineups before, right, you had to be at a certain standard. You had to, you know, you'd get picked, things like this. Yeah. Whereas on a live stream, if you want to showcase your talent, all you've got to do is click that live button. Like you haven't got to have, you know, you can show your talent without yeah. having a certain standard of what people think that, you know, you should be this good or that good. It's about just getting yourself out there. It's not about yeah. how good you are. You could be at the very start and still showing it off. There's there's but. a few examples, isn't there, we were talking about before, um, about people who've built following during this period. Um, mm. One one is Emma Pick, um, who just was busking and she's recorded a few songs in here, which I might play you later as well. Um, and she got 5,000 followers just over the lockdown period by just busking. And there's that element of people like that live um, unedited raw talent feel and I think that people are on social media a lot more mm. so they're picking up on these people yeah they're um, like the raw. yeah, they're like yeah. It, and yeah. you do a lot like I see so many videos you do and you're just like smashing bars and yeah. like for like the lyricists out there it's amazing to just see that you've got that raw talent oh, uh, you. Yeah, no, I, yeah. <laughs> you know um, and then there's another example um Johnny Rubin, uh, Dr. Funk, he's built a massive following um, through just Facebook live streaming and going onto other platforms. And I've been um, working with him, which has been incredible because he's a great bassist, one of the best I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I look forward to saying some of his stuff actually. I've yeah. been talking about it. <laughs> yeah. And have you two found it easy to be, um, stupid sentence, I know some of the artists that I've worked with over the years and the music artists I worked with are finding it very hard to make work at the moment. They're not feeling, you know, so much change going on. So many of their plans are disrupted. Then they're not finding it easy to write music, create new stuff at the moment. And, and other people are just like, cool, I just get to hunker down and make and <laughs> nobody's actually interrupting me. And how do you, where, if that was a sliding scale, because I don't think anyone's one thing or the other, but kind of like, how are you both finding, are you finding that this actually has been a really creative time for you? Or are you finding it's more a place where you're consolidating where you're already at? I was hoping that it was going to be, I, well, I was hoping it was going to be creative. I was like, oh, I've got all this time, I can write, but it's Something actually it. <laughs> yeah it's actually far the other way um there's i get my uh inspiration from atmosphere i get you know 
I could sit at the back of a rave and write, you know, I, there's just something about lots of people socializing, just an energy. And because I haven't had that, I've really struggled to write. And the stuff that I have written has been because I've had a little burst of it here and there. Um, and that's through going up and doing a live stream and, mm. you know, just networking with these people doing the live stream, even that, you know, gives me a little bit of energy and inspiration to write and you know I can actually feel the energy fizzle out of me and I'll be like right no nope, need some need some more yeah. atmosphere <laughs> I need an atmosphere yeah. again yeah for, for me it's been different just purely because I've built this yeah and I've just yeah. locked and then when the lockdown came in I've just locked myself away and written loads of music yeah and I've just like been enjoying learning you know how I can showcase this and teach this sort of side of things to people. So I've been really creative. Yeah, you've had lots um, of stuff to keep you busy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so I've like made a lot of, um, I've made a couple new aliases um, and I've, I've made many, many songs which are all due to sort of come out this year. Um, but I was sort of holding fire a little bit, just, um, but I'm just gonna go for it now and just start releasing. Going I'm just gonna go for it. Uh, so I think I wanna like start pressing records again um, for some artists, like crowdsourcing them and just generally releasing on different platforms and yeah. finding the best strategy um, because it's totally changed um, the way music's digested mm. um, and using platforms like Bandcamp Free Fridays where they give you 100% of everything for an artist, that's amazing. Like they've they've nailed that. Whereas, you know, Beatport, you know, the sales would have dropped and it almost seems crazy to spend money promoing a release mm. for for not much, you know, to come back, if anything, you know, sometimes. Um, so it's just like working out different platforms and ways that I've to adapt right yeah. to the times. I feel, I feel like maybe in this time aesthetics, like videos Video especially, content. like people like to, you know, you don't just look listen to a song anymore you know you watch it on youtube and mm. they've got a whole video and i feel like especially if you have a video it keeps them it keeps them locked onto it and then they're like oh right and you have a little link saying buy underneath it <laughs> yeah you know, that's the sort of way that i've sort of learned how to yeah adapt. but it is it's one of those you've got to constantly change it because people you know all the platforms are completely different so you know so one of the things we've both done is set up a link tree yes. during this yes. time so i'm gonna like screen share quickly yes, please um please. just to show you maddie's link tree which is a great way of um basically having all of your things uh, all of your links to your platforms um in one place um so it's easy to share with your fan base basically so organized. you know it looks, just looks pretty doesn't it it does, it does. <laughs> i know that you can um you can buy an upgrade and you can change this so you can have like, yeah you can have a photo in the back you can have sure. like, a nice uh, title um <laughs> i'm just on a budget <laughs> <laughs> it's free so yeah, it's free, the free so, one's yeah. good it's absolutely free to yeah. if it's free to use why not use it sure um cool <laughs> what's the platform that you guys are most enjoying uh using yourselves so like are you are you liking the informality of say doing um tiktok or instagram stories or or instagram live or such or facebook live or are you much more enjoying taking the time and thinking about the aesthetic and going for as you said the youtube music video and kind of exploring that kind of element i think for me it's 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 different for the alias under which I'm releasing. Yeah. Um, so I've decided for um, my two alias to just use Instagram and Bandcamp and then through Linktree and other social media platforms, drive everything towards them. So you've got buy here, listen here, yeah. um, and then hopefully build your audience in there and then you can expand mm -hmm. um, from there. And then it's it, you like for, for like live musicians, the whole video content, has been and the creation of that is really important because you can monetize your Facebook um, and your streams and you know um, and people get to know you so it's it, it's different ways to digest and you've got to find which platform yeah. functions for your for you basically. <laughs> it took me ages to make uh, I personally it took me ages to make a tiktok account but i eventually did because 
with the music that I'm sort of my target audience, mm. it's younger kids and younger kids know how they, you know, they're always on the new something Next. new, the new app. Yep. I don't know how it works. I'm still learning. But, <laughs> Same. You know, I have so, no idea. So yeah, I'm just sort of targeting where I think my audience is going to be. Yeah. Um, but I do I, know that TikTok is pays the best for publishing and streams at the minute. Yeah, right. Yeah, you it, know, so it's definitely a platform. To, <laughs> yeah. to to like jump on i like instagram though i do like instagram instagram's my favorite yeah if 100%. i'm honest I just think it is. for the feedback and general like fan base they tend no, to I just find it easy to use it's all <laughs> yeah. right there you know yeah. It's all <laughs> yeah definitely and what's your um for actually publishing your music and uh, releasing it out there are you Bandcamp, Mixcloud guys? Are you, um, I've just probably said something really weird. I can't even remember my brain. Just had a... Sounds uh... Thank you. I knew I got that wrong. I knew as I said it and then just carried on. Um, or, or are you kind of, are you trying to get your stuff onto Spotify as independents or through your record labels? Are you trying to get on other people's playlists? And how are you, how are you thinking about the actual releasing of your music? Sure. Um... So, turn, it up for me? Is that turn, turn you up. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, so yeah, um, yeah. Again, it like it depends on the artist. So I use SoundCloud to share um, with bigger artists. So I have um, a download link enabled private, and I will just find their emails and drop them an email. And most of the time artists are sound enough and at the moment especially they've got time to respond to you and at least say yeah i really like that or give you some feedback so that's the start and then i will either look to get music signed to a label or sign it to my own label if um someone's not interested um just to keep momentum and keep your mm -hmm. artist profile moving yeah, um definitely. and but yeah like it's like a mix you've got you've got to find what works for you at that time i suppose um yeah but, definitely yeah, it's constantly changing and so is the climate of obviously corona yeah so i have a feeling that a lot of stuff online you know everything when everything comes back we're gonna have a good month or so where online is going to be quite quiet i reckon yeah like i mean even when the summer comes back i reckon we might go i back. mean everyone's looking forward to being going going to festivals and yeah, gigs again everybody just I wants mean, to live in that moment and get i uh, get out <laughs> but yeah. yeah it is just adapting to what is in what way we d i don't know it's going to be like how do you go from how do you go from the tables I, how do you go from the tables? I don't know how you go from, how do you go from the tables. Can how anyone tell me? <laughs> um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, that's a, a, a great, yeah, a thing to think about is, you know, if someone can operate safely as um, at festivals and stuff, and, you know, it'd be, it'd be nice to go back yeah, and definitely. perform again. Yeah. I think that's what people are missing the most is the performance yeah element it's yeah. like you know we like you said you your creativity comes from atmosphere. your atmosphere and you're thriving off gigs and you get those ideas when you're on stage probably yeah I, yeah <laughs> i tell you what there's especially at nas festival the stage i can sit basically on the stage and i remember looking out towards that crowd and thinking oh there's a bar here i could do a bar there yeah, you yeah. know and it, yeah it was really fun but when, i miss that when you mc do you find it weird when like you're like thinking of a of a bar and then it just comes to you all of a sudden in the right moment over the right tune. And then you get that hype and you make that connection with those people in the crowd. Yeah. Um, and like, what I would say is like, how, how do you build that audience up? Um, and I'm going to link it back. It's like, sometimes you get those people that you know from the Southwest. So yeah. from being down here, I'll be like, I know you. Yeah. And then you like, yeah. you're like, you have that connection, don't you? Definitely. So that's a big thing about being down here yeah that, you, you that is a massive thing to be honest you with the southwest when if you go to a big rave you're going to bump into it's a support a, network a lot <laughs> of people that you know yeah but that is also another thing when it comes to the drummer but it's like a family like, yeah they are the same people that go right i mean obviously there's new people coming in all the time but you know that you know you when you go to a rave and you're like yeah i know you i know you because well, <laughs> we all love the music definitely yeah yeah okay. um 
Hello. Do you want to show us some of the music? Yes. <laughs> My segue sure. there. <laughs> nice. Because <laughs> I know nice. that Benny's got a whole load of really good stuff primed, and I really want to make sure that you guys on the other side of this webinar get to hear some of these great people that he's been talking about and see oh. some of the examples of his work and Matt uh -huh. work as well. So I'm going to hand back over to you, Benny. So, yeah, um, I'm going to just run through a bunch of tracks, mine and Maddie's, um, and then sort of just talk about what we're doing. Um, so this one is what um, Maddie's going to perform over later. Yes. Um, <laughs> and this is part of a project. So um, I'm working with, um, it's called Break the Cycle, and it's a very new project um, with a lovely lady called Lady Dove and my business partner, Dan Kelly. Um, we're going to work with young offenders um, and try and give them a creative outlet um, and write music for them, record them, um, and just sort of see if we can help change the cycle for them. Um, so this is one of the beats um, we've got someone on. So yeah, that's um, just a little clip of um, the first beat that we've done with this artist, um, and you'll hear more from them in in time. Um, so I suppose which one sh shall I play next, Maddie? Of yours, do you want to the tango or the tra Mr. Traumatic? Oh, we'll do, oh, we'll do tango. Yeah, tango. We'll do the bang bang one. <laughs> so number one. Number one. Juno. No, do, was it number one or Juno? Yes, it Gino. was. It was, yeah. Gino. Yeah, see it. <laughs> yeah, it was a little moment. It was really yeah. Nice. It got onto the um, beat port charts twice as well. Class. So it was really good. Yeah. All those things, like, I think when it's you... number eight. Class, mate. That's yeah. like amazing. Like, right. you know, it was very Is this your that. first release? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you're ready for a lyrical slaughter. Try not to slip, but I saw ya. Chat shit, only man, because I caught ya. Did you think you'd be getting off lightly? Did I mention that's not like me? Could do, but it's highly unlikely. I'm a redhead, so I'm highly feisty. Bang, bang, you bang out of order. 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 Bang, bang, you bang, bang, you bang, bang, you bang, bang, you bang, 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 bang,
sound and nice to people and like talking to them at gigs like professionals that come and get booked to play down here um you know i've networked quite a lot of like through casa and stuff like that and just meeting these artists yeah. and exchanging emails maybe giving them some music well they've got that club now I so thought, i'm excited i mean that's another thing that's going to bring an incredible amount of nightlife to plymouth oh yeah is like having another venue that you know Obviously, we had the Crash Manor there before, um, but this is looking completely different. Sure. Like, it's, yeah, it's, like, it's, it's, I feel like it's got the right people behind it now. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be looking after Casa Records um, for them. So we, we've got a bunch of music ready to go, but um, we're going to coincide it with the launch of the club. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's amazing. Those boys are um, going to do some really nice things um, for down here, I think, mm-hmm. just in terms of like yeah. having a bigger venue. Yeah. just to just to put events on yeah. it's going to be really nice exactly. like i definitely want to do like a granary studio um showcase where i can like put on artists that come through here um okay. and that would be a good way to sort of yeah promote maybe their first night as well exactly yeah, yeah. and give people the first chance to play and stuff like that yeah. so yeah. um cool depot, uh, isn't it? that's coming soon to play depot. Depot. <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah there's some other like while we're on events um I know from working with the Barbican Theatre, they've got some really exciting stuff lined up. I can't say too much, but um, yeah, it's all like Plymouth has all these great creatives who are really pushing for something good right now. Um, And hopefully it's when we can. You need it though in this, you know, when creativity is at an all-time low at the moment, you need people pushing that. It's yeah. really good. So big ups to the Barbican Theatre. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So we'll probably um just gonna share some more music. Um and I'll try and turn it up this time <laughs> loud enough. So this is um a Dr. Funk demo. Hopefully that's loud enough. So he's just talent. He's talented. He just like comes in and is like wants to shred, and he's just like doing like six bass layers and all that. Oh my god! And he's just an incredible artist to record. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna drop back in because I can chat. Good for me. It's <laughs> cool. Um, sound. So that's um, yeah, another thing I'm working on and. I have skipped it along because of some of the language in the earlier one. I've skipped oh, it to your verse. Um, I was quite good at my You verse were good. Time. You were good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, well, I have, like, with obviously looking at the target audience, like, I have a younger fan base. Tamed it slightly. Yeah, and I have, like, I mean, there's sort of stuff you do want to make it a little bit more PG online because yep. with the audience, you want their parents to be like, oh, yeah, no, she's good. You don't want them to be like, turn that off. You swear. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in it, yeah. And then that, that then prevents them from listening to it. And what's going to happen then? They're not going to, you know, yep. the future. They're going to be going to Rose and the older. Mummy says no because the language. Yes. <laughs> we want mummy to say yes. Yes. So. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, so I'm going to drop this one on. Maddie V, so pleased to acquaint you. But you've been climbing for a long time, <laughs> ain't you? You've been racking up the school. You've been all over the board swimming season in the jungle you've been swinging around your sword get control like a puppet with the strengths you know the ones where they're attached by all the limbs and treated like a voodoo doll they're sticking in the pins and they're sipping on a dignity replying with a grin listen here i am and i am threatening your existence and with persistence i'm twisting up the system if it's only logical you can't deny statistics and hopefully i'll get to get home and tell the business i'm on a mission now give it a petition now i want to talk about a couple things that I got written down, raise a little hell when listen to the sound. Do you hear me now? When I'm finished, try it with a pretty ribbon round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Let's get a reload on that. <laughs> unison, unison. Oh no! <laughs> got shot down. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So <laughs> DJ's like, uh. um, so this is Emma Pick who has built following um, down in the southwest. Um, this is her own tune. Um, it's called Better Days. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, singer and guitarist. 
I was just amazed, like, when they were you down on it, he's so away. young and, like, just comes in. Got me begging down on your knees. Yes. Screaming, someone save me, please. Um, but yeah. Somebody put my mind at ease. You ain't got to feel alone. Even when... All right, cool. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop back to... Um, this remix that I did for um, Anjuna as Panda, which was like um, one of the first things that got me a, a lot of plays. Like, <laughs> um, I was just like, I don't really know how it came about. I think um, we just made a connection at a festival. Um, at a festival. Was, yeah. And it is like um, built this relationship with Anjuna where we got a remix um, and then Animac played it on radio one a few times and um did it as her presents which was um a, a big buzz like yeah, you know like I seven years that, ago <laughs> yeah so um it was just um it was a house track we played It, this is one of the first tunes that I heard someone else playing it at a festival. <laughs> you know, it's like a nice, a nice feeling for a young artist. You know, you know something. One of the like things I think people have to control to hear their tunes being played. <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> No. It's, it's definitely a, uh, definitely a goal, a hundred percent. Cool. We'll drop back into. Drop back. In. Um and. See. I mean, I just like the fact that if you looked really closely on that screen share, it was like 412 uh, plays and not <laughs> many, you know. It's like, oh yeah, 000. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 21,000 plays on this music video. It's like, yes, guys, this is why we're talking to you this evening. This is really good. <laughs> cool. Um, so, yeah, I think, um, I, I don't think it's a hindrance being done in the Southwest. I think no, sometimes it can help. It's only when you've got a long travel and, um, you know, that yeah. sometimes you think, oh, why, why didn't I move or, you know. I feel like that is the only sort of real con to just being in the Southwest yeah. is literally just travelling. But, I mean, if you don't mind travelling and you can get, like, music done on your travels, then it's even more of a pro. Yeah. Like, I mean... Just I to just, sit there and make beats yeah, exactly, on the train. exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah maybe getting it it might be expensive but when you get to a point where you are traveling to perform or traveling you know that's something that you can speak to with whoever you're working with at the time if you know if they want you they'll be willing to pay your travel yes definitely <laughs> travel feel um, but yeah no i i tell you what i like it down here i'd much i feel like i'm much more comfortable down here because it's not as fast paced as well like i like to do writing and and creativeness yeah. at my you know i want to be creative in my own time and you can there is a lot of um dartmoor's right on the doorstep and yes. it's great for escapism down here i mean i like sea swim like yeah. most days ah, like just just no. just i like the cold it refreshes me and like oh, i just God, couldn't do that I in london <laughs> yeah. but i do love going in the sea i absolutely love it it is really it does make you feel really good it does um, yeah there's something about being down here on the coast it is just there's a lot of musicians who come to down, the down no, here to write do. you know and it's 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 because it is uh there's a lot of inspiration um 
we were down to your studio. yeah right, we? we were recently working with um the audio bullies and um a lot of his songs he was taking pictures of stuff and like using that in his lyrics just like stuff he'd seen and i was like that's a great way of writing because really yeah great way of writing. um and you know some of the songs you can hear is referencing throughout the lyrics yeah i tell you what that's really cr- I, there's something that i've wanted to try recently um and because i'm quite good when i get quite um uh what's the word when i get quite cool. excited about something yeah i suppose um uh, passionate there you go when i get quite passionate about something i can speak for ages i can do a massive yeah um massive bit of writing but it might not rhyme so what i want to try to do is writing it all down maybe even voice noting it yeah and then seeing what words i can replace maybe even turn it sure. into a sort of, you know what i mean yeah like yeah. voice noting is the savior for me <laughs> like i'm i've I'm like never written a lyric no. i've always like freestyled it and then gone oh that part's cool mm. and then flowed off that and then made a chorus or a hook or a verse from it yeah, and it, you yeah, know just good. mind splurge yeah. lyrics yeah, is a great I feel like it's better as well because you can keep a flow as well um when it when i've um gone to write it i'd say it and by the time i finish writing the sentence i've lost it yeah you know what i mean oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> many times but then also in the same in the same breath i would say that it is good for when you're memorizing yeah because when i when i'm spitting the bars again i can picture how sure. i'm putting them down on the bit and it gigs yeah just, come, <laughs> yeah just like remembering your bars when you're at gigs is like <laughs> yes. um something sure, that needs to be thought just, about i might just plug my phone in headphones and get the voice note going on yeah head. yeah and just quickly go, just to kick back yeah, in yeah just be like, I forgot uh, these yeah yeah, yeah. Myself. you do need prompts i used to write mine in my notes i used to write the first yeah. line of like every yeah, all in my notes. yeah. but um, it is just the first line just yeah and it's bomb kick yeah. start it's something in your brain just goes like okay yeah. cool i've um, got a bad memory though and whenever i've been on stage before i i've, I've looked at my phone looked at that first line, <laughs> for God, in my yeah, pocket, yeah. gone straight away <laughs> oh, straight no. that, i'm so focused on the music and yeah. the beats and coming in time there's only it it's dance your way out yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we've had a question um, which is how would you say is a good way to approach collabs um, I'm going to share a, um, something DBS have put out or sent to me today which is online ways of um, collabing at the minute which is a really um, helpful document I got sent it today um, so I'll ping that into this chat afterwards um, or make it available on the video I'll ask Laura what's the best way um, but a good way to approach collabs I, you know it's hard right now because I like to be in the studio with the person yeah. because you both have that creative say and then from the off the direction is both of yours um you know when it when that's in terms of producing it's probably slightly different for you um yeah well i haven't had to do it that much this is the thing is i haven't actually i mean i've collaborated obviously mm. with traumatic yeah but that was so how did you do that vocal then was that like a recession or a... he sent it i'll tell you what it was amazing he sent me the track with his bit in it yeah. And I just listened to his bits and I created my own piece sort of in the same relevant subject. Nice. Um, it was lucky because I had like a 16 already that sort of just was Fit. like, oh, that just, that just works. <laughs> Sits right there. Yeah. And did you record that at home? Or um, was that in, what did you go? So basically, um, with down here, what is good about being a writer is I've got all this time to write and learn and practice. Mm without a recording that yeah. when i go to the studio you just quite, i'm quite made. efficient you <laughs> are efficient. i mean you came here last time and you recorded a hip-hop track uh, yeah, <laughs> and yeah, some but, bars for a different um yeah. well i feel like that might even be like a positive of um not having the accessibility straight away yeah is that you've got time to you know refine all of your stuff make sure that it is you know you've got it in your head because i feel like if you memorize something mm. you can put so much more it's the delivery yeah exactly you know you can you can like i think um sink into the performance yeah. and picture yourself yeah. like in front yeah. of the yeah. stage it's like 100%. a big thing i try and get people to do when they're in the studio is um feel relaxed and you're comfortable very good at i was so relaxed <laughs> and i think that's probably why i got on with it so well that's yeah but that's important cool. about 
um, with you having the granary, is yep. making artists feel comfortable. And you did straight away, which is amazing. And it's going to make people want to come here a lot often. Hopefully. <laughs> oh, <of course. laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay, nice. Um, it, I think it's been put in there already. It has. Um, Jamie has very kindly, um, who is surreptitiously in the background of all of this, um, put the link to the um, uh, the DBS document that uh, many has been talking about, and yet we'll make sure it's also in the video information if we're allowed. Um, there is a question about DBS uh, that's just come up, which I'm going to ask throw in at the same time, yeah. which is about. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the training you had there and the degree you did at um, DBS? Um, yeah, so within DBS, I did the sound engineering and music production um, course. And basically, they taught me a lot about um, the technical side of production and EQing, um, uh, just general, really specific stuff like reverbs, what it is, and yeah. you know, all of that, that good knowledge to have. Um, and what, what I took from DBS was, um, and any education is pick, pick the guy who's smashing it and look at what he does and learn, yeah. learn from him. And there was this guy, Callum, who taught me so much about production, um, who ended up in Panda with me. <laughs> um, and like DBS was a, a great platform, um, of support and, you know, they've got such good technology um and i'm working quite closely with a guy called mike steventon who is a great dj great producer um and you know he's he epitomizes what dbs is for me and it's um just a friendly atmosphere to help musicians learn and create which is sort of what i've tried to like replicate um, what me and Dan, because me and Dan, my business partner, were in the same DBS class together. Um, and I think, yeah, it's, it sort of showed like sort of how we approach this studio, um, taking it from DBS, really. Talking about how you approach this, this studio, um, yeah. uh, there is a question here, which is what's the viability of setting up a recording studio in the Southwest? And it's interesting because also I know that we've got um, somebody here listening in, um, uh, a gentleman yeah. called Dean Moore, who set up PWS in Liscard as well in January because he was uh, um, he was saying how he, he really understood where you're coming from. So, <laughs> but, um, uh, so please feel free to yeah. feed into the chat, Dean, if there's anything that comes so, up. That's been talking, but yeah, what's the viability? of setting up a recording studio in the southwest <laughs> um call me crazy but it's a crazy time to open a studio like flat out like we, you know it's a very tough time working under so many restrictions but there's a lot of artists that need um a level of support and i think a studio can do that if we, we try and um give ourselves um, different options and avenues. So with the labels, if the music writes from the artist, we will sign it and give them that platform, um, which you can go around chasing. So it's like not just the studio we're trying to set up. We've got uh, the management. We want to educate people about the publishing side because there's a big um, gap in people's knowledge about where they can make their money from. Um, and we want to do it fairly. So we set up a computer system, operating um color coded so percentage splits are worked out of what an artist has recorded um so it's done fairly and educate like trying to educate them um as they come through um and it's definitely viable um through just i don't know the way i built it this specific space and i've got it moving quite quickly is the is the free hour um and then people see what you can do and it's about showcasing what you can do for people um and we offer a service where people can either use the studio on their own or they can use it with um either me or dan just to advise or we can you know create and record so we offer a range of services and tailored to people's needs um and yeah we've just we're building and we're, we're still in our <laughs> like minute stages of this this business um and we're making like networking and building and building all these friends and it's, it's getting easier and i'm seeing that there is it is viable um and there are studios like cube um down in cornwall that have a lot of famous artists um and uh devon analog um which is an amazing studio we're going on our staff trips there <laughs> it's got every piece of hardware under the sun so it's like a dream um but yeah like 
for um, the person who opened the studio in this guide, if you need um, any advice or support, like um, I'm sure Laura will share my contact with you and I don't mind speaking to you about it and giving you a hand um, and potentially sending people down your way. And I think there is a lot to be said for uh, um, studios which aren't in the obvious places. Um, when I was doing Key Change, uh, we were out in Iceland and there is a phenomenal recording studio, which sim is on a, an industrial state right on the edge of Reykjavik. Everyone goes and records there. Mm. The atmosphere is lovely. The team's brilliant. The equipment's great. Um, their approach to it is fabulous. And literally they've got world-class musicians and they've only been going for a couple of years and, and they've got world-class musicians from all over the world going, yeah. oh, actually we get to go somewhere different. We are removed from our other things, which are kind of either limiting how much we spend working together as a team, so on and so forth, you know, and we get to be in a brilliant space creating creating music uh, yeah. you know and that's just one of the many studios that kind of like where that works where that being somewhere else and being somewhere different can be an incredible asset <laughs> I was thinking also I don't know if you guys know about the um the brilliant music venue that's in Ashburton just up the road at the A38 A38 um it's uh, a community run space it's an old Methodist chapel phenomenal acoustics the guy yeah, who yeah. runs it happens to be one of London's best jazz um, saxophonist, has played with everybody, he used to always be at Ronnie Scott's, you know. So he has this most amazing group of musicians who will come down and play there because they initially came like, you know, that kind of like come for an hour for free, yeah. came down to see him, fell in love with the acoustics and now add a random extra date on their tour to a tiny Methodist Chapel in Ashburton, even though they normally tour to the, you know, the South Bank Centre or, you know, um, Carnegie Hall in New York and just appear there because the acoustics are so beautiful. And uh, so I think sometimes the the viability is is the diff is about embracing that difference of what you offer and where you are. I think the nudge building um, is the acoustics in there from when I used to go there. We've mentioned that Paravit is going to be awesome, um, <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah, I think there's definitely a big thing about musicians being attracted to where their music sounds best. <laughs> um, we're quite lucky. We're in an industrial state, so we can be loud and we've got this whole building. So the middle floor is... Um, an office space, media editing suite, and it's going to be an art gallery. Um, and then we do renewable energy business on the top floor, which is a uh, dark energy <laughs> plug um, <laughs> for Dan. Um, so yeah, it's um, exciting because we're going down so many different avenues. And I think that makes it sustainable because, you know, when studio sessions aren't um, necessarily thick and fast because of COVID. We're picking up the slack in other areas. Um, and also I've sort of changed the way I'm doing my sessions right now. I'm running them via Zoom where I can um, take control of people's computers um, and do some stuff with them and also work on their project on my computer. So both ways are functioning. Um, so we're, we're adapting and learning that as we go. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it's cool yeah, it's all exciting it's very exciting well um, <laughs> yeah. since we're talking about studio spaces and since you've got maddie v sat next to you and seeing she promised us that uh, uh, you know we get to hear um i'm wondering whether or not we might be able to um set that up and um get to hear a bit of um uh, maddie's awesomeness and um, just as a thing maddie's mic if you're playing the track on your computer is coming through very very quietly okay. um, so yeah. it might take a a moment to figure that out one so, two one two you can just take the mic out if you want as well it's just messy. Nope. um hopefully that's loud enough one um, two one two give me feedback in the <laughs> how does that sound for you guys yeah, cool. so um and fair play to maddie she hasn't um she's only listened to this beat tonight so this is um, <laughs> yeah. uh, I need to actually go back. Um, sorry. Yes. Whoa. 
I was told that as many things that I could be Wrote a list and it's longer than that I can see Had a scam, made a plan and a plan B And grabbed a pen and a pad and I ran free Now I'm sure about this Cause it's everything I wished I should've made Another list that could be something that I missed I should've made this if gift to make it clear that I exist I can't resist so I persist The new I didn't need a list Constantly I'm overthinking everything Or I am going in about where I've been A battle with myself <laughs> a battle with myself with me, I'm challenging The way my mind works, it's amazing that I'm managing I'm plastering my mind with the feeling that I can't And I respect through the people that are standing by my side I feel useless, don't know if I can do this I wanna get through this, it's stupid, this music is ruthless But I'm holding on tight And mentally and physically I'm putting up a fight I deserve this, and I know I'm not perfect But I did the work and well I'm the one that earned it <laughs> All right, we're going to drop back in. Uh, we could have more of that all day, guys. Uh, just saying. Uh, Maybe we'll get you um, for the launch of the new. Uh, Rebels music, we could potentially get Maddie back again to do Ooh, a longer yeah. showcase, would be great. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love coming might... down here, so any excuse, any excuse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we've got um, some really exciting, as as Benny hinted at, some really exciting events where we're starting a new. Um, I'm just going to plug, I'm just coming in for the plug, guys, plug. just so you know. Um, um, we've got a whole new uh, program of work, which we were lucky to secure funding for, which means we're going to be running Rebels Music, which is going to be um, two sessions a week, which Benny is one of the practitioners we're working with, um, which is everything from uh, opportunity to learn about um, acoustic music, music principles, um, uh, vocal technique, um, music tech, beatboxing, um, uh, production, management, uh, their classes, they're going to be open uh, for you as uh, collaborators to take them where you want to. Um, and we're really excited. And so there's going to be a whole set of events coming up over the next three months from um, uh, workshops and masterclasses like this and other taster events uh, before we go live with classes. And we're building a purpose built studio in our building in the center of Plymouth, um, where you will be able to access for free, like a podcast and a vocal recording studio and computers set up with um, Logic and Adobe, um, Logic and Ableton and everything so that you can make your own music and find your own space and build on the stuff that you're exploring with um, Jason Singh and Ali Hart, Daisy Hickman and Benny. And it's going to be ace. Um, so if you're interested in that, send an email to Rebels, get involved. Um, it's uh, it's going to be a really great opportunity. Alongside that, we're going to be doing stuff um, with Prime Skate Park and at Millennium and uh, up at the Speedway. And so, yeah, yeah, Maddie, we've got, I've got, I'm sat here just going, cool, I'm just going to book Maddie for this. <laughs> uh, there's going to be loads of really great opportunities. Um, and we're also hoping that um, uh, we're going to be able to host Maddie at the Barbican for a live stream in our theatre. So you'll get to hear her do one of her sets and some tunes, um, which will be epic. Um, so yeah, there's going to be uh, loads and loads of lovely things coming off of this as we look at how we build and promote all of these great voices that are here. Um, I can't thank you enough for, for doing that, for when we were setting up this, um, this afternoon and I was like, are you cool with that? And Maddie's like, I'm always cool. I'm always cool. And I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah well it's, uh, it's something that i love isn't it so. yeah cool <laughs> the perfect line um i'm going to uh, open the floor for any more questions from anyone else um uh we've the you guys have been in so you've got all of about 30 seconds to throw in a final question otherwise i'm going to wrap up um the conversation this evening has been absolutely brilliant. I hope you've been okay with me popping up and popping down and throwing in questions and uh, um, uh, interjecting on occasions, but it's been so, it's such a joy to hear you both um, talking so frankly and so openly about um, collaborating and working and making work and how you got to where you're going and where you're going next and how it works for you and what this year's felt like and that's a real gift and um I can't thank you enough on that um there's a great final question oh there's two oh my god there's loads of questions now great let me think it <laughs> up a little bit later cool. ah two really stonking good questions that have just come in 
and uh, one very sensible one, which is how do we email rebels? And I'm going to come back to that right at the very end. And hopefully um, we'll reply in the chat to you about that. Um, but the first of the two stonking questions that have come in are one, how do you create music without recording equipment? Ooh. How if you haven't got Benny's studio? Hey, so um, your phone is a great source of um, just voice noting and recording. Um, and yeah. even if it's a draft idea um, yeah. in between. Um, also, there is a bunch of free software out there right now, um, free plugins, um, free doors, basically. So you can set yourself up for zero cost pretty much oh, honest that. yeah cool. there's yeah. like um you know so if you potentially haven't got, i think you can you can use ableton and logic free for three months at the minute um plus if you go on facebook and search free plugins there's like groups um where they just people just put plugins they found that are free and i use it all the time i've like installed everything on there <laughs> just like grab it because i'm like oh that might be handy for that um so that's that's how my best suggestion if you haven't got any equipment at home and if anyone needs help with that can guide you <laughs> yeah, I, was about to say, I was like you can help out can yeah, yeah. Got a i would also say check out some of the brilliant things like the um uh, library of congress in the u.s made an extraordinary uh web page where you can mix and sample loads of their field recordings which are in their archives and you can set them to beats and you can record them the same oh. as there's been a brilliant 808 state one that came out last week mm -hmm. so if you just google around there's some lovely web-based um platforms that allow you to set up beats use free samples the bbc's got a whole um uh, field recording archive which you can access online and again it just allows you to um uh, if you don't have a array array of instruments at your fingertips and you've only got either your phone or just a really standard computer you don't need anything else it's all it's all in the capacity um that they've built into kind of like the um the website platform so they're definitely worth checking out and you can record them off and save them and um mm. and use them um so that's another really good trick is to um is to just start weirdly and um, Bot says reaper which is a great shout yeah um for a door that's free um and i used to like i coassulator which is it used to be an app i coassulator i think it is I, I can't remember i think i think that's what it's called but i used to i used to just make beats on that um on my phone um so there's a few apps out there as well which is worth googling um it's cool Right. Um, another question that came in, which is also great, is um, who are your favourite artists right now? Like, who were you listening to today? Who are you like? Ah, um, oh, that's a, such a tough question. Really? But um, there's so many genres. I'm really liking um, Tom Mish um, and that acoustic, like, um, sort of sounding um, band feel where it's really mellow. I'm like fully feeling his start fkj along that lines um yeah those those are my sort of like chilled um <laughs> but then I'm, I'm liking all this um sort of re-emergence of garage which is coming about yeah um, yeah yeah i do you know what i listen to a lot of american music i listen to a lot of female american rappers um just genuinely because i like their the light is nothing to do with me yeah. focusing on the lyrics. So it's genuinely because I, like I, I proper like to dance. I like to dance. And if a beat gets me dancing, then, you know, because I can I'm appreciate in. all music with the <laughs> opera going straight to drum and bass. Yeah. If it makes you feel something, it makes me bop a little bit. Then. Yeah. But I think at the moment, I really quite like Doja Cat at the moment, actually. Yeah. Doja Cat at the moment, I quite like her. I really like her voice. Sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, cool. Absolutely excellent. Um, there's uh, two more questions because they came in like a flurry, like I knew they would. Um, the first is um, uh, maybe a really obvious one. If you end up using kind of like some of the free software you get, like Logic Free or GarageBand, mm -hmm. do you get copyrighted afterwards if you make music on those platforms? Um, so the loops, I believe, are royalty free that come with um, Logic um, and Ableton. Um, However, you can purchase sample packs and there are free sample packs. Um, I think Cymatics does uh, sign up for his website and he sends you drum and bass, dubstep ones and constantly getting emails, but they're 
good sample packs um, for a drummer bass, especially. Um, and there's there's just so many free resources now, um, sound libraries um, that are, are royalty free. So I would just, um, but yeah, if you download Logic, I'm pretty sure all the Apple loops are royalty free. But don't me on that. <laughs> um, cool. Um, and the final question, I think, hopefully. No, there's more. There's more. They just keep coming. There's two more. It's just never ending. It's great. Um, if um, if you were to give a tip to somebody about how they could work on their self belief and their confidence, what's one of the greatest? What's one of the most useful things that you've done for yourself, or you've found has worked for other people that you've been working with? So you just got to put yourself out there. I, I tell you what, it is. <laughs> I feel like I had a li I had a little um I had it quite easy when I was younger. I was a dancer, so I feel like I got my confidence quite quite young just through performing. Yep. But I tell you what, it's ignoring. It's just accepting that there are people out there that are always going to make comments, um, and you should never be worried worried of people's opinions. Yeah. Ever, because at the end of the day, you're doing it for yourself, and yeah, just constantly putting up. So you've always you're always going to get people who don't like what you always. do always, um, and it's taking the rough with the smooth because there's people that really love what you do, and if you like what you do, continue to do it um, and push it. Um, and my like advice with like confidence is maybe like breathing and meditation beforehand, um, and also like we were talking earlier about um, crowd interaction. So if you're performing at a show and um, you see someone who's having a great time and looking at you yes. and they're vibing with you, lock eyes with them, make yeah. friends with them, get that energy, get Just a couple like that they're the only person there. Yeah, like like you know if you're. At the front of a stage with your friends yeah and there's no one else and you're just dancing with your friends exactly and their energy will just ricochet off to be other people and then you end up with all everyone having a great time yeah and i'm <laughs> sure like if you are going to a place where you are going to perform you're going to have somebody there that you know yeah so yeah just yep. yeah, definitely. the local connection we said earlier you know that on. plymouth guy i but know you <laughs> also you shouldn't i feel like there's a lot more awareness around how people um, speak about people, especially online. Yeah. Um, I mean. Um, yeah, like people are horrible sometimes online because they're. But <laughs> so, I feel like people are getting called out a lot more for it now. Definitely. And I don't think people are doing it as much. People are not going to slate you on the internet because there, there's mm. a lot of people online that are just like, hold on a sec, this person's just trying to get the self out there, have fun. If you don't I like feel, it, go I, away. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like it is actually preventing a lot of people from doing it especially yeah. online, you mm -hmm. know. It's like a continuous two more questions. I'm going to make these the last two questions, I think. So um, everyone else is going to have to contact us or join Rebels Music to um, uh, give more uh, and hear more from this brilliant crowd. Um, yeah. How how are you? I don't know if you're both living in house shares, but somebody's put this brilliant question, which is how, um, how do you get over living in a house share and not being able to kind of like properly create and express? Like, I like to mess up in privacy, you know. So how do you how where do you go or how would you approach your creativity if there's loads of people around? <laughs> they're just they're just going headphones. Yeah, just headphones. headphones. Um, um, it's like <laughs> timing, maybe. If you're living in a house share, yeah. so like mm -hmm. send everyone out to get drunk when you can, yeah. um, or like you know, they oh they, they they you know, and then if you're shy about, you can blare it and not care. I think yeah. timing as to when you're planning your sessions is yeah. is probably important in a house share. I think oh, yeah. I do I do know exactly what you mean though. Like mm. you, our walls are paper thin, you can hear everything. But I definitely found like headphones. If you, I mean, if you can't hear your own self mess up, you know. Uh, yeah. I, if I can't hear them, they can't hear me. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, just just keep at it. And most of the time, people are in their own rooms and they're actually focusing on their own stuff. It is just your own own head, and you can you can because you're right there. You can hear yourself mess up. But yeah, <laughs> just know that you're doing yeah. fine, <laughs> and the, ho the house is probably vibing with you. <laughs> yeah, I think I ended up making music with my, when I was in a house share during uni. I ended up making music with my housemates in the end. Yeah. Like we were, yeah. <laughs> you know, like that's another way. Like um, you never know; they could stick their head in and tell you to turn it up. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's a great. That's a great one-liner. They can stick their head in and tell you to turn it up. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That you don't know what you've got until you start putting it out there. 
Um, there's a really funny, famous, uh, somebody who works with, I think, over the Ezra Collective or something like that, who was talking about having started off as a guitarist and they were in a house full of guitarists. So he randomly started playing French horn or something <laughs> similar to this. He was just like, cool, we just need a really different sound in here. And I'm like the fact that he went from uh, guitar to brass as yeah. the yeah. kind of like the illogical jump. You know, you don't know what's going to happen and what, what everyone else is secretly making in their bedroom when they think you're not listening as well. So, yeah. Um, our final question for the night is, if you could give one final major tip to an emerging artist or a musician or a producer, what would it be? Keep going. It's like a time thing. A great example is uh, an art artist that I've got coming through, DJD and Grimms, and they've got five albums worth of material. And this, they've just released their first one. And like, it's time I've like explained to them, like, you know, their quality of release for their first album is beyond what some professional artists are doing now. And I just think, you know, this this music industry is about the long game for some for a lot of artists and how you build that following over time is my my tip so just stick with it mm -hmm. keep keep trying keep plugging and keep asking people for stuff yeah. <laughs> for releases you know don't be afraid yeah no 100 that would be my biggest tip is network and speak to as many people as possible because what i've found in this music it is who you know as well <laughs> like because you can speak to someone that could know somebody else and it is a domino effect really just keep i feel like i didn't know that at the start was networking no. is the one of the most important Definitely. things like i feel like that's how i've got, I've got <laughs> yeah. <networking>. Defo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 great well i think those are really really great things that thing of you never know who somebody has so ask and can make connections and just stick with it and keep finding your voice and your way forward and finding where and how your work will land um and i think that's really true that we have a right to our own creativity and our own ex expression and sometimes we're ahead of the curve and sometimes we are we haven't quite found ourselves yet and unless you keep going you never will so trust that um, I want to say thank you so much to um, Benny and Maddie. It's been an absolute joy having you this evening. It's been so great to hear you speak and everything that you've been feeding in. Um, again, to everyone who's been here listening at the other end, um, these are weekly. They're on Thursday nights. They're at 6 p.m. Um, uh, we give these for free. We've been doing these for free. We've been doing all of our work for free. Um, uh, everyone who's involved is paid, but we've been giving them all our events for free. Um, all the way through lockdown we're going to continue doing that until at least the end of the summer we think it's really important that people have the right to access and engage with work and create work um for the first time tonight we're going to put up a, a, a qr code screen at the end of uh, this as you're leaving and if you want to make a donation you'd be really really welcome we'd, we'd appreciate it because it helps us um, fund this activity and do more work with young creatives in the city um that's it for us tonight we look forward to seeing you next week and uh, thank you very much, uh, Maddie and Benny. No worries. Thank you for having us. <laughs> yeah.